Dusty truck built a small amount of polluted frac water onto his property. My wife had some health problems and this was her uh, recovery area and uh, we had a little bit of heaven. The only thing you heard at nighttime here was your heartbeat. Now it's, it's just totally devastated. And the water dumped out down off their pad, down across my land, into my pond, through the pond and into the wetland here alongside me. And what it did, it killed the pond, uh, killed the fish, killed everything in the, in the pond. No frogs, no turtles, nothing. Our, our drinking water in our house has high concentrations of lead. Uh, they've recommended it, or they've told us not to drink it and don't bathe in it. From our heaven, now it's turned into our hell. The estimate of the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Preservation is one serious environmental concern for every 150 wells drilled to date. You do the math. If we're talking hundreds of thousands of wells, we're doing hundreds or thousands of spills. That's called cumulative, cumulative impact. So it goes to the heart of your question. Why are you not seeing all these things yet? Because the cumulative impact is accumulating. Come back in 10 years. The ecologist met with an ex-gas industry employee who described a spill on a site that he worked on. Some of the sites are well regulated, yeah, where DEP and OSHA and stuff like that, where they're right on them and stuff, yeah, they're well regulated. But the rest of the 95% of them, where they're not going to go out to the site and look at them, no. <laughs> no, they're not well regulated. Some of them are real bad. I've seen chemicals come out of the side, literally the side. It looked like the mountain was bleeding. They had the... They had, it, looks like a plateau, they had the pad here, and they have like the barrier fence around it, and there was just like this red, nasty water just coming, just oozing out the side of the mountain, just the side of the hill. So, <laughs> they're not doing something right. But a toxic cocktail of chemicals is not the only worrying component in frac waste water. Critics argue it could contain far more dangerous substances. These shale deposits are rich in radium, radium-226. The level of radium in the Marcellus is about 267 times the safe disposal amount, meaning it'll kill you. So uh, there's also there's, there's anecdotal an evidence that, that these frac fluids will leach uranium out of these shale deposits. There's also radon in these shale deposits. So uh, in addition to the fracking fluid, which we know is toxic, the frac flowback leaches radium out of the shale. The radium is carcinogenic that, and that's something that's being introduced to the surface in a spill uh, that wasn't there before. As the profile of the potential dangers of hydraulic fracturing grows, both public and experts are becoming increasingly concerned by the rapid expansion of fracking. But the gas industry have hit back with expensive ads, PR campaigns and high-level lobbying. It's the cost-benefit of BS, of PR, of ads, and payoffs to politician is extraordinary. The return on investment of paying off a politician, running an ad, discrediting critics, is, it's, it's one of the best investments that the industry can make. Although they declined an opportunity to speak on camera, a spokesperson for the Marcellus Shale Coalition, which represents the gas industry, told the ecologist that gas extracted from fracking is both safe and a panacea for America, offering a fuel that is both a cleaner and a more secure choice than relying on foreign energy supplies. But Professor Ingrafia disagrees. Because in general, in the usage framework, oil and gas are not interchangeable. Petroleum is largely used for transportation. Natural gas is largely used for heating and for industrial activity. So until you can show me a plan as part of a national energy plan to transform our transportation system in the United States to one that uses natural gas, right, that argument is specious. Natural gas burns cleaner than any other fossil fuel, but it is not cleaner in its life cycle. Studies that are being done at Cornell University right now that are going to be released soon in peer-reviewed journals will show conclusively that the life cycle cost in terms of carbon dioxide emission and methane emission from the development of gas from unconventional sources like shale is at least as dirty as coal. Professor Ingrafia is also concerned about unregulated fracturing practices spreading around the world. Not only do we now have a technology that has exceeded our regulatory capacity, we have a government saying something that's ahead of the, of the technology. 
So I'm, I'm really concerned about people in Europe, India, Asia, Africa, uh, that they're going to jump into this again too soon without understanding completely what the implications of this use of technology are on environment and human health. But despite the concerns of experts from across the spectrum, fracking in Pennsylvania is set to continue. Ralph Kisberg, a campaigner against the gas industry, offers a sober assessment. You've got to realize the vast majority of people here think it's wonderful. They think there'll be jobs, they think they'll be able to keep their families here, they'll be able to pay for education. Um, but we find, as you've seen when you talk to people, that all is good on paper, but when things happen that ruin the value of your property, ruin the health of your family, and it, that all goes out the window. With hydraulic fracturing set to expand across Europe in the coming years, how governments respond to this new technology will be crucial. But the lure of a new domestic energy source and the promise of jobs in regions starved of investment may prove too powerful a combination to oppose. Potential benefits need to be balanced against acceptable risk. For that, you need facts. Like, what's really in the 5 million gallons of fluid, including the 75,000 gallons of chemicals used to frack a single well? Under the Bush administration's Energy Policy Act of 2005, companies didn't have to tell you. However, in September 2010, eight companies responded to an EPA request for information. It took a subpoena to get Halliburton, the company that pioneered fracking, to respond. Fracking chemicals are linked to bone, liver, and breast cancers, gastrointestinal, circulatory, respiratory, developmental, as well as brain and nervous system disorders. And they are in frack waste and may find their way into drinking water and air. And it gets worse. Today, waste from Pennsylvania gas wells, waste that may also contain unacceptable levels of radium, is routinely dumped across state lines into landfills in New York, Ohio, and West Virginia. New York does not require testing waste for radioactivity prior to dumping or treatment. So drill cuttings from Pennsylvania have been dumped in New York, Shimung, and other counties since 2009, and liquid waste is shipped to treatment plants in Auburn and Watertown, New York. It is ironic that New York State, the first in the nation to put a temporary hold on fracking pending a safety review, nevertheless allows other states to dump frack waste within its boundaries. How radioactive is this waste? Experts are calling for testing and are concerned about the contamination of the drinking supply of major population centers, including New York City. With the gas production boom underway in the Marcellus Shale and plans for some 400,000 wells in the coming decades, the cumulative impact of dumping potential lethal waste without adequate oversight is a catastrophe waiting to happen.